Welcome back into another video here on the Underage Packers podcast. Today is the NFL trade deadline, and the Packers did something. I think this is a good lesson to be careful what you wish for Packers fans because as the clock was ticking closer to the trade deadline for the NFL at 2 p.m. Eastern time on this Tuesday, Packers fans were getting a little ornery, just like we do every single year around the trade deadline. Like, come on, Brian Gutekinds, are you going to do something? Are you alive? And they certainly did something. They traded Russell Douglas along with a fifth-round pick for next year's draft in return for a third round pick. So that's that. We're going to be recapping our emotions of it and also our analysis of it today here. I'm Joey and joining me is a man who, when asked by Matt LaFleur at the Packers team practice, who his favorite player was big B confidently said, I'm I'm not even going to say it because it won't do it. The justice the same way you did big B. Can you, can you give us one more for the culture? Russell Douglas. Yes, Big B confidently said that in front of the whole Packers team. Uh, so just how are you feeling uh, at, at this point? We're about three hours removed from that move now. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty heartbroken, uh, pretty, pretty sad. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm about like the same level of like depressionness I got when Jamal left. So oh, okay. what? Yes. Oh, I didn't know Russell was that. I didn't know you liked Russell that much, dude. I love Russell, and well, I guess it's I loved I loved Jamal like a lot more than Russell, but I knew it was gonna happen. So it's kind of mm, you know you yeah know I, that's uh, fair yeah yeah it yeah I was completely blindsided by this. I did not expect the Packers to trade Russell Douglas out of everybody they could have traded. I thought Russell was gonna be the last person they would trade. Like he's having a career year. He's the even yes. though PFF doesn't mean anything, like he's the highest uh, rated player according to PFF. And man, he's just been such a stud this year. He's such a great locker room guy. And uh, it just breaks my heart. I don't want him to leave. He deserves to be on a yeah. winning team, though. But it's but it still breaks my heart. Yes, exactly. That, you know, I went through the same thing of you did, just the sadness of seeing him go. When I first saw the trade, and I don't know why, like, when I first saw it, it was definitely one of those, like, uh, like you see it at first and like, oh, and then like you think about it like a half second, and you're like, wait a minute. What did that say? <laughs> yeah. What? Did, that's like legit Ian Rapport saying that Rasul Douglas has been traded to the Buffalo Bills. What? Um, and I was very sad. I was sitting, <laughs> literally sitting in Plaza 900 dining hall here at Mizzou. And um, I, I see that and I legit said out loud oh my god um (laughs) so yeah it's sad and like like you mentioned rasul has been one of the very few consistently good players on this defense um like you mentioned very highly graded on pff and also from andy herman which i value more um and also too i mean you just compare his leadership to some of the guys that we kind of counted on to be leaders for this team. And like, he just seems to be one of the best leaders. I mean, you know, you look at the veterans, the very few veterans on this team, there's obviously more on the defense, Um, you know, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark, they're not doing, you know, we're not hearing anything that they're doing a bad job as a leader, but Jair Alexander, who doesn't seem to realize that in his seventh year in the NFL, he needs to step, step it up. Like his, bit of where he's just uh, a funky young guy who's really good at football that does not come off too well when you're playing bad you know and are being yeah. paid 84 million dollars um and you know he does have that back injury but you look at his uh, Jair's press conference with reporters after this loss to the Vikings and he was I, like I get being upset after a loss um but he was brushing off a lot of their questions did not seem to be interested in taking any accountability and not that he needs to take full credit or full blame for this loss, but he, uh, well, he just was not speaking like a leader, um, Mm -hmm. which is like from the outside, you know, there's obviously more going on than just that press conference, but still, and then Rasul after the game though, he is emotional talking to reporters He's telling them 
that he isn't doing a good enough job as a leader, that he needs to be better as a player, as a leader, needs to be a better force in the locker room. Um, And despite that, though, Cassidy Hill says that almost every single player went up to Rasul after the game and asked him for advice. So I, I just, like, it hurts to lose a guy like that. And that's why, like you mentioned, I it was confusing at first because we were expecting going into this day that – the Packers probably aren't going to move just because like that classic clip of Mike McCarthy, where he pretty much describes the mindset of 1265 at the trade di- deadline where he's asked if they're going to make any moves. And McCarthy just goes, Oh, isn't that next week? Like they do not care. Like I, they've been in conversations the last few years for Will Fuller and Chase Claypool. And thank God they didn't make those moves. But other than that, like their most notable trade deadline was 2018 when they sent away Ha Ha Clinton Dix and Ty Montgomery, which in hindsight were two good moves. So we expected like if the Packers are going to do anything on the day, it's going to be similar to those where they are just, uh, you know, the few veteran players that they have get any value that they can out of them. You know, some of those guys I was thinking, Preston Smith was one they could have traded. Um, I know some people were throwing around Kenny Clark, especially because he isn't having a great start to his season. Um, An um, unemotional me suggested Jair Alexander this past Sunday when he let up that touchdown against Minnesota. Um, But anyways, there there was quite a few candidates that the Packers could have shipped away. Um, I, but Rasul was one that I kept coming back to. And I was like, you know, it makes sense. He's getting up there. He's going to be probably in his 30s by the time the Packers are a playoff contender again. But still, like, on a team that seems so lifeless, so disconnected, how could you trade away a player like that? Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. So that hurts. But also there's another part to it of, like you mentioned, really hope, wishing the best for him in Buffalo now. I mean, he's going to spend what probably would have been, you know, a, a very boring last half of the season with Green Bay. Instead, he's going to go to Buffalo now and compete for a Super Bowl. Um, and then, you know, Big B, any other thoughts on the emotional aspect of it before we move on to the actual trade return for the Packers? Um, Man, uh, I don't think so. I'm just really depressed. I'm sad. Depression. It's, it's depression. Like, this has hit me harder than any loss this year. And that like says a lot too, according to my like Twitter feed. But oh yes, it it, it truly it truly has hit me harder than any loss this season, and any loss probably in the last few years. Yes, um, not in the past few years. That's a stretch. But this oh, year, yeah, except I, one, except one game. It, that one game has topped this. I mean, it happened last year, last game of the we year. But a, we don't talk about that. I think you're forgetting how much hope we had throughout 2022. But anyways, uh, yeah, I anyway, I care. Yeah. I care more about this loss than most of the games this season, at least. Um, but yeah. And then as far as the return for it, um, what the Packer, Packers actually care about is the fact that they of course sent a fifth round draft pick and in return got a third round draft pick. And you know, the, the instant Twitter reaction is, well, they're going to waste that third round draft pick anyways. But honestly, like looking at this holistically, like, Russell Douglas was a practice squad journeyman and he came to the Packers and he came to the Packers secondary at a time when they were desperate for cornerbacks, both Jair Alexander and Kevin King were injured early on in the season. And then Russell steps in there. I want to say week five an early season game in Cincinnati and immediately, <laughs> you know, who also had a good game against Cincinnati, Big B? Who? He had a bit even better game than Roswell Douglas. Jalen Smith looks solid <laughs> in this game against Cincinnati. Oh, but oh, brother. Russell, too, uh, he also looked good. He showed some promise in that Cincinnati game. And he, you know, in, differently than Jalen actually has been good for us past that game. <sighs> and then, of course, a few weeks later, he has a game-winning interception against Arizona. And I forgot about this Um this aspect of how highly the Packers coaches talked about Rasul until I was doing some more research or on uh, article I was writing for Ohana Packers, their blog, which by the way, go check out that article I wrote for them. 
had a fun time with that. But I was doing research for that, and I remembered how much we heard Matt LaFleur and Jerry Gray, the Packers secondary coach at the time, just talk so much about Russell's work ethic, talking about how he watched more film than anybody else on the team, that this sudden rise from him was no mistake. It was not a fluke. He is such a hard worker. He carries the G. Um, so, yeah, there, there's just so much emotionally that the Packers are losing. And, like, you know, you could say, well, it's show friends, not show business, which is true. And the fact that the Packers aren't really looking at all these great memories of Rasul. But also, like, at a certain point, you do have to take into consideration what he adds as a leader. Um and maybe we just don't get the whole view of it from the outside. Who knows? But yeah. And then back to this trade compensation, which we've been trying to focus on now. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the third round pick, you know, regardless of what they've done in the past, it is the early day two pick, gives more trade ammunition. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. They, they get a good player. They get a good draft pick. So it's definitely disappointing, but at the same time, it makes sense to get rid of your veteran guys now. And they did that. I wish, you know, it was never going to be easy. Any of the veteran players that they could have traded, like I, I love Preston Smith more than most fans. Uh, I mean, there was a, a good possibility that they could have moved on from Aaron Jones. It would have made so much sense. I mean, he's the Packers clearly don't think he's useful. Um, <laughs> but, wow. Okay. She is. Um, <laughs> I mean, at least not in play. Um, but you know, this is the last next year's the last year on his contract and his cap hit is like very backloaded. So it would it would have made perfect sense for them to trade him. Um, I mean, although I don't know what the trade return would look on that, but they didn't, thankfully. Um, so I guess we'll never know. But uh, like it was always going to hurt with whoever the Packers ended up trading if they did end up trading anyone on today. So it hurts that Russell was the one. And uh, now we wish him the best in Buffalo. And hopefully the Packers don't mess up this third round pick. Um, they will. They will. <laughs> uh, Big V, any thoughts on that trade compensation? Do you think, I mean, I know you want to say that Russell was worth 20 first round draft picks, but do you think, the, yeah. the, what do you think? You know, just outside of your emotions, what do you think the Packers get out of this trade? Yeah, outside of my emotions, I hate to admit it, but mm -hmm. that was a very good trade. I think that was probably the most we'll ever get for Rasul at like any point he was a Packer, like in the past and in the future. So I, I think we we maximize the um was it the uh, return in investment or whatever that word is called or phrase. <laughs> so yep. uh, yeah, I, I, I think that was a very smart move by green Bay to uh, try to rebuild this team and build for the future. Yeah. That's the same. I mean, nobody, we're not trying like I mean, these next two years. I, you know, the Packers realize that they are not going to be competing for a super bowl. So like, and if, so if you're over 25, like it's hard to make a case for them to keep you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. And they, they get some more ammunition for the future, which is good. Um, I think that's all with the Russell trade. Um, I guess there's more to talk about too, with just the moves the Packers did not make of not, you know, we've, I, we've talked enough about the players they could have traded uh, away but you know you look at the rest of the nfc north you have the vikings adding josh Dobbs just as because they really need a, a solid quarterback with kirk cousins out uh they also traded their guard ezra cleveland to the jaguars you have the bears adding <laughs> montez sweat for a second round pick which honestly like i think that's like montez is a montez sweat is a very good player he was my draft crush in 2018 but it's just so hilarious to see it like a few hours later, Chase Young be traded for a third round pick. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I, like I know like Chase Young like hasn't been the same in like a few years, but mm -hmm. is Montez Sweat really that much better than Chase Young? Like really though? Right. I mean, obviously contract 
Well, I was going to say age too, but Montez is older than Chase. Yeah. But contract plays into it a bit. Um, but yeah, I feel like the Bears got like they were shocked that John Lynch answered their call. Um, and they yeah. they just like did not realize that they'd probably take lower than a second round pick if they just, <laughs> you know, negotiated with them more. Uh, mm-hmm. Ryan Poles got on the phone with John Lynch, heard second round pick and did not try to negotiate at all. He's like, deal. You've got it, yeah. John. Uh, I mean, the funny thing about it, too, is that the Bears, like, their second-round pick is going to be in the 30s, and then the 49ers, their third-round pick is probably going to be, like, what, in the late one, one tens. <laughs> um, so it's it's a little bit funny, for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the Lions, they added Donovan Peoples-Jones from the Browns, which what they, all, they gave him the fifth-round pick, right? Sure. I believe it's I believe it was fifth round. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anything too much like as frustrating as it is to see like like this happens every year where like a move is made. It's like, man, you're telling me the Packers going to offer that. But, you know, just not being in those rooms, we we don't know what calls are making. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's difficult to say. It would have been nice. Um, even though we're talking about just building for the future, it would have been nice to have, like, I would have really loved a veteran wide receiver to come in to just help out Jordan Love because that's, like, that's our Super Bowl at this point. If we can provide enough talent for Jordan Love to, like, have a better environment to grow in, that would be amazing. At the same time, though, like, who is available and also, you would be taking away snaps from Christian Watson, Dontavian Wicks, Jaden Reed, all the other young guys they've got in there. So, I mean, I think what T. Higgins was allegedly available, but he didn't get it, end up getting moved at all. Um, I would have loved Terry McLaurin. That that would have been yes, yeah. ideal. Definitely, because he is definitely a, a weapon, but also still young, uh, could contribute over the next five years, would be a, a solid player. Yeah, but, even if it was a one-year rental, I think that still would have been an amazing acquisition for this just this season. Yeah, I mean, even just for – I mean, he's just such a date threat. It would be so great to have somebody – and I think a lot of the Packers' young receivers have that potential, um, but it would just be so great for somebody that's done this in the NFL so many times to be paired with Love because he has just been really struggling – on the deep ball, whether that's because of his lack of connection with your Romeo Dobbs and his other receivers, but he's, he's just been struggling on that. So it would have been great for Terry McLaurin to kind of cover some of those holes up. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. I mean, any other players you want to talk about that the Packers missed out on besides Jamal Williams and Devonte Adams? Um, I don't think so. I would have loved Jamal Williams though. That would have been nice. Yeah. Game changer. That, that, I mean, that we would have won the Super Bowl this year if we went out and got Jamal Williams. It's like automatic, like I Super mean, Bowl. Like just, just give it to us, like now. If yeah, we trade it for they just cancel the season immediately. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean that, that would have been fun. It would have a, a more realistic. I say more realistic, but it wasn't not going to happen. I mean, if Devonte Adams, I've I just feel so bad for him. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean that just sucks, and I I hate like. I love Devonte Adams so 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 much. He is a great human, at least from what we can tell. Uh, amazing football player, like uh, probably the one of the most amazing football players I've ever watched in my life, and will be. Yeah, um, easily. But I mean, just the fact that he wanted this situation so bad um, to be in Las Vegas because he thought that they'd have better quarterback security than the Packers that he'd be closer to his family and that hasn't changed to be playing with his buddy, Derek Carr. And that quickly has turned into a very, very bad scenario for Devonte, And it all came to a, a, a boiling point last night against Detroit. So I, I feel sad about Devonte, but that's we're we're on a tangent now. Talk about we are. Adams. Um, I think that's all we're going to talk about today as the Packers. They made a move on the trade deadline, so there's that. You can't complain that they did nothing. Brian Goodikins will be talking tomorrow, Wednesday, to talk about this move and the other moves that he did not make. 
So we'll be looking forward to that. And other than that, we appreciate you tuning into this video. Uh, make sure to follow the both of us on Twitter and social media. Uh, and also, like I said, check out that article I wrote going more in depth on Rasul for Ohana Packers. Uh, we will talk to you later. Go Pack Go. We love you, Rasul. Good luck in Buffalo.